What is up guys? Once again, thank you so much for stopping by at the channel. Today I'm going to have Mrs. Truckmaster install the Kryptonite upper control arms. Super pumped about this one. This is going to be a while since she's actually did an install video. And just so y'all know, I'm not a mechanic, but I'm going to do my best and learn how to install these things. I'm not a mechanic either. Let's get started guys. Guys, so now that I have everything unboxed, as you guys can see, this is what comes out of the packaging here. Uh, camber and caster bolts, washers, bushings right here. These are your bump stops. All the hardware you're going to need in order to install your ball joints and your nuts and bolts and grease irks. Safety cotter pin for the bottom of this. So let's go ahead and install all this on the upper control arm. Next, what you're going to go ahead and do is use a 10 millimeter socket and just take off this bracket relocation bolt right here. Next, what you guys want to do is remove this safety pin right here where this castellated nut is that's connected to the upper ball joint, which is connected to, of course, your upper control arm. So we want to go ahead and disconnect this from the knuckles, what we're doing right now. So just straighten that out, pull this out completely, and then we'll go ahead and remove this nut right here. Got it. All right, there it is. That's actually kind of tough, believe it or not. Especially if it's been on there for a long time. You got it. Push forward. You got it? Yeah. Nice. All right, guys. So at this point right here, just leave leave it on just a little bit because we're going to go ahead and pop that knuckle right there. Uh, there this Now, mind you guys, this is loaded right here. So... If it was to pop up without that, it could it could potentially hurt you. So just keep it sort of on. There you go. So you just need the master to do it. Yeah, right. All right, guys. So next we're going to go ahead and remove the bolts on both sides of the upper control arm. It's all right. It's like flying bullets. So, yeah, those came out really easy because I just installed them like a year and a half ago. Yeah, these bolts are still pretty nice. Yeah. So, guys, if you run into this problem and you're having a hard time trying to get these bolts out, you can use an air hammer. Uh, you can chisel them out. Some guys actually heat this up, believe it or not. Um, these get really bad, especially for us folks that live up here in Michigan. Yeah, these um, are still pretty decent. Yeah, they're still in good shape. Minnesota, you know, uh, Ohio, or should I say salt on the roads. This stuff right here would come out really, really difficult uh, in any given situation. But just understand, guys, you're going to, this is probably going to be the hardest part of the job right here is just trying to work these bolts out right here. You got this. <laughs> Good job. They are. Nice. Wasn't too bad, right? No. How long have these been on there? Uh, probably about a year. Maybe a year and a half. Oh, really? Yeah, not too bad, though. What are the difference? These ones look beefier. Yeah, the, the zones look a lot, a lot beefier, but with the lower profile, these are solid. These are actually hollow on the inside. Oh, really? Yeah. So, more of a lighter weight construction. The other thing is, is this ball joint's actually already blown. So, well, because we put the pickle fork in there, but either way, it was it, it was pretty bad. This one right here, if it does end up blowing, I could just buy a new one and bolt it on instead of trying to press this out. Mm. So that's what I love about the Kryptonite products. It's just so much more user-friendly. And also, this is a neat little thing right here. Yeah, you have a grease irk here, but you don't here, but you do here and there. So these are going to last forever if you keep up on the maintenance. All right, so what I ended up doing is I went ahead and took off this little grease circ right here because this isn't going to be a complete direct shot here. You can't just put these on. 
So I used the pry bar, moved it over like that to the rubber mallet. You know guys, a lot of how-to videos, people just show you removing it and then they just kind of miraculously put it on and you never know what kind of issues you run into. That was the issue that we ran into. But honestly, it does fit. You just gotta really muscle it in there and get it in there. Yeah, it takes muscle for <laughs> sure. But uh yet again the master had to step in. Oh, I'm not a master. <laughs> but that's it, guys. I mean, it's in. We'll go ahead and put the caper and caster bolts in it and we should be good to go. One thing that I'm learning is these retaining brackets right here may be aftermarket. I'm not totally sure. But what I can tell you is these washers right here do not fit in these corners right here in the proper direction. Now, if I was to put these on, which these actually came from a 2006 Dodge is what I ordered this from. It's a 2500 Dodge, three quarter ton. These work because of the washers. They're round and they fit perfectly. So, you know, I'm gonna end up having to use these instead. Unfortunately, I can't use the brand new stuff. I was excited about using that. But when you put them on there, guys, it's just, it's not gonna line up. And not only that, it doesn't have that notch in it to where you can actually line up that slot. So unfortunately, we're gonna go ahead and just stick with the round washers, but you know what? If it works, it works. You got it? I think this is tight. You getting tired? No. That's good. <laughs> that should be good, unless you want to put your man muscles into it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Dude, now guys, we get, we just got to tighten those up, and then we're going to do the other side. And then once we're done with the other side, of course we got to do an alignment, because this is going to be all over the place. Don't forget to install your safety pin. All right, guys, so that's pretty much the gist of the install right here. Of course, you got to put grease in the greaser to secure your sensor through there, back up there. And that's it. You know, put the wheel back on and you're good to go. And then bring it to the alignment shop because you definitely need an alignment for sure. So I'm not going to show you guys how to do the other side. The biggest reason why we're doing this, if you're watching the last video that I posted, we talked about the goodies that we received, which would be the kryptonite upper control arms as well as the wheel bearings. I'm going to be doing, guys, I'm going to show you a how-to video. So this is going to be the very next video on how to install wheel bearings on a 2001 to 2010 Chevrolet or GMC Silverado. You guys get the gist. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Since I already have the wheels off, I'm going to go ahead and install the wheel bearings, and I will do a how-to video on that as well. So make sure you guys stay tuned. All right, good job, honey. Thanks. I needed a lot of help, obviously. <laughs> well, I mean, it's if you're a beginner, if like you've never actually done this stuff before, it does take some some finagling in order to get that upper control arm and in there. And a lot of muscle. Technique as well is always a big thing, but it's really just uh, just playing with it. But okay, muscle, yeah, a little bit of it, but you know, I got a lot of that. So <laughs> He's stronger than you guys think. All right, yeah, you guys should see these pythons. <laughs> Um, kryptonite upper control arm, some of the best stuff you guys can get on the market, especially for aggressive stuff like myself that I have here on the Duramax 35s. Uh, I know Kyle's got 37s, but these are proven, tried and true. They've tested these quite a bit and they hold up. So I, I'm willing to bet that I never have to replace wheel bearings again, unless I do some jumping <laughs> and rock crawling. <laughs> I so, wouldn't put it past you. We'll see. <laughs> uh, stay tuned guys. Another how to video coming up for you. So uh, this is going to be really exciting. I can't wait to get all this put on, get this truck back on the road. Of course, get it back to the alignment shop so they can line her up. Enjoy the Deaver rear lift springs, the four inch lift springs that I have in the back. I did an install on that video as well. Man, you guys are going to learn so much, man. And I hope I'm not having you spend money. I do apologize for that. <laughs> um, oh, what do you got? Guys, check this out. This is huge. This is awesome. We got Duramax, or no, no, we got Truck Life. Key tags, Duramax Life, key tags, ready for sale. This is a big deal. These are cool. A lot of you guys are asking me when I'm going to come out with key tags. There it is, guys. So Duramax Life key tags. 
And of course, just to keep it a little bit more universal, truck life. I really dig the truck life. That's pretty sweet. I'm going to so. put this on my uh, van keys. <laughs> you look at that and be like, what? Van life. No, but, but they're pretty rugged. Cool. Yeah, no, I mean, they, they're they very... They look really cool. They're very nice, too. I yeah. mean, it, when you feel them in your hand, so... Uh, and I like the black because, you know, it won't get dirty as easy. I mean, there's a little white on there, but, you know, you know what I'm saying? It looks real sharp. I like these. I'm excited. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll probably rock both of these on my van keys. I don't care. <laughs> so, uh, link in the description. It's going to be also... You can you can find this at truckmasterdiesel.com. Sounds official, doesn't it? Yeah. If this is your first time stopping into the channel, you have not subscribed, you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. Hit that thumbs up if we've learned something. Appreciate your guys' time. As always, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.